Okay, greetings everyone. This is First Centurion 753 with a new series from the game Hearts of Iron 4, playing with the Great War mod, World War One. And we're gonna do a series based on we're gonna do a series with Germany. We're gonna base it on the philosophy of one of German Germany's greatest statesmen, uh, Otto von Bismarck. Otto von Bismarck was the Chancellor of Germany in the late 1800s. He is the one who orchestrated the unification of Germany from the uh, na nation of Prussia. And after unifying Germany in 1871, he maintained a peace with throughout Europe with a system of alliances that maintained the balance of power. He had certain philosophies and certain approaches to international policies, uh, German international policy, and we're going to play the game based on that. Uh, one of the things he's famous for is predicting that the next major war will happen from some damn bloody thing in the Balkans, is what he said. So, sort of predicted World War I, or at least how World War I would have began, and had some arguments with the Kaiser, I think towards the end of his career, when he was removed, they didn't necessarily get along, and I think uh, Wilhelm II definitely did not appreciate the strategic approach, or the, con the cautious strategic approach that Bismarck took in the late 1800s. Bismarck is not someone, after, after the ambitious unification of Germany, Bismarck does not is not very aggressive in foreign policy and instead of going after more land uh, he pretty much disliked the idea of colonial empires and he looked for no further expansion just really looked to maintain the peace. However, I think he does change his position on colonial empires and does start to build them later on uh, for German prestige, so we're going to take a look at that. As far as the comments went in the uh, overview series that I did on this, most people seem to want me to start with 1910. This game, the series is probably going to be, you know, not as aggressive since we're playing as Bismarck. I'm actually trying to avoid war, so I'm just going to put that out there as a warning. Uh, we're going to try to avoid major conflict specifically. We don't want to get involved in a two-front war. And one of the big things that Bismarck said was uh, he was opposed to invading Belgium, which is exactly what the Germans did to start World War I, and that brought in the English. Of course, the English are not fully entrenched in the Entente at the beginning, or at least not at the beginning of 1910 when we're looking at this, the powder keg of Europe. I already read this in the previous uh, series, so I'll just go ahead and we're going to select that scenario. We're going to go for Germany here as an authoritarian ideology which is uh, not something that's in the traditional game, that's more of a mod ideology for this particular mod. I know I've seen this uh, authoritarian uh, ideology elsewhere as well. And we are just going to go, I'm going to go ahead and just get into the game right here because I read the descriptions before. We're not going to do Iron Man mode. Um, I don't know why. I'm just not going to do Iron Man mode. Uh, we'll do regular difficulty level, and what is custom? I never saw this before. Oh, interesting. Nah, I don't want to do that. Um, I didn't look at that before. That's interesting. We're going to keep historical AI focuses on, so we'll play like it's history. The only change is going to be as the leader of Germany, I'm going to be acting more as Bismarck would have possibly acted if he was around in 1910, 1914, and could he have prevented the war? And uh, this is a really good mod, I'm going to say right from the beginning, I think it's very well done. It's uh, got really complex uh, national focus trees for a lot of these major countries, which I love, it's fantastic. It's also got appropriate technologies and equipment and weapons for the time period. It adds another resource. I think lumber is a resource that is also added. Let's take a look here. The resource match here. Yeah, we have uh, wood. Wood is also added as a research and coal. Those are both added into the research. Uh, 
Or not the research, the resource items here. Those are the only extras. Coal and wood, right, there we go. And I think they're used for building certain chips and weapons and stuff like that. We'll take a look at that. I want to look at the National Focus Tree to start, because this is kind of like my favorite thing when it comes to doing alternative histories, because it allows for different approaches in National Focus. Now, Bismarck did not really, like I said, he didn't go after uh, empires early on, although he does, uh, he wasn't big on building up the navy, so we're going to try to actually avoid this part of the Focus Tree, at least for now. Maybe later we'll get involved in the navy, but he didn't want to, you know, entice England too much. So, I'll definitely focus down this industrial tree, which is, this is just the basic one, pretty much, uh, down the center, really. We're not going to go for dockyard expansion. Maybe airfield expansion. I don't know. Bismarck didn't really have any opinions on, well, I haven't found anything about, you know, Bismarck's opinions on air power. I think that was a little after his time. Uh, getting down to this research slot is going to be critical. There are two extra research slots here. We want to get them right, as soon as possible. But as you look there, uh, we have to wait till January 1st, 1916, so it's going to be a while before we get there. And, yeah, so that's going to be an important one. We may get into the Air Force a little bit, but I, I do think this Army tree is going to be also important. Chemical warfare is possible here. Gas, mass, mustard gas, and phos phosgene shell? I don't know what that is. Uh, special Forces, Motorization, Panzer, Panzer II, that's interesting. So all that is there. Oh, and by the way, you can actually, this mod is, can actually extend the game into World War II scenarios. Uh, name Hitler Chancellor. I don't want to do that. I want to try to see if I can avoid that. But I don't think I can get into this tree without doing it. Mein Kampf. I don't think there's any other way to get into that tree. So, hmm, I wonder if I can play Germany and extend it into World War II time period without having Hitler become Chancellor. That would be, I think, an achievement. The diplomatic effort is my favorite, probably, the political effort. There is a few things here. We're going to reinforce Kaiser authority because he was a, Bismarck was a Junker, which was a... Prussian aristocrat, which means he believed in the aristocracy, he was a uh, supporter of the monarchy, <clears throat> excuse me, um, and he is really the authoritarian conservative. I, some people call him a revolutionary conservative at the time period. There is a resurgence of uh, conservatism in the late 1800s as a reaction to liberalism. He does promote liberal liberalism throughout Europe, uh, one of the strategies in containing France is to promote liberalism around France. Of course, liberalism in the 1800s is a lot different from liberalism today. But he was looking to establish Republican states around France, even though I think now France is a Republican, so a Republican state in the game. So I'm not sure how well that's going to work. Um, so the big the big focus here that's going to diverge. So we're definitely going to go down that. Uh, we'll go down this authoritarian line, and we'll go down to paramilitarism. Until we get the fascist coup, I'm going to avoid a fascist coup because we're going to keep with the monarchy. Uh, so it'll be down Reorganization Act, Patriotic Act, and then massive effort. But that's the furthest we can go. I wish there was a way to access this tree without making Hitler Chancellor. That's the one thing I wish I could change in this. Um, one criticism there. Because how could you have an alternative history? Does that mean that Hitler's inevitable regardless, according to this alternative history? But uh, they do have very good descriptions for all, a lot, most of the national focuses, especially ones that are unique to this scenario. And there are multiple different diplomatic approaches we can take uh, in this focus tree. A secret alliance with Romania, that sounds interesting. And, and the thing about Bismarck not wanting to grab more territories, I, I think that's going to affect my... Uh, Conquest. I'm not going to really try to expand at all, but um, I, I, I think I still can fight within Bismarck's, you know, ideology and establish puppet states. So I'm thinking maybe a puppet state of Denmark, uh, maybe the Netherlands, um, maybe grabbing territory from the Netherlands. Netherlands is neutral in the war and doesn't really take a side, so that's an opportunity there, I think. And 
uh, he tries to avoid the Balkans, but uh, allowing the Austrians to have influence there is his part of his approach. Uh, but I, I think a secret alliance with Romania would be fine. I think that's that's allowed. Um, what's well, another one? This one is restructure. Deutsch Africa. This is an African approach, African strategy. So I guess we can do that if he is going to try to get. I don't know. I can't say these words. Get some sort of deployment. That's interesting. He's not at war with England. We could try that since he's okay. Since he does pivot towards colonial expansion, we could try going down that tree. Uh, renewing the Triple Alliance is definitely something I think Bismarck would try to do. Securing greater alliance system, supporting Hungary. Or supporting Italy. I think we're going to lean to supporting Italy because if you look, I'll show you the Austro Hungarian uh, diplomatic position. Very favorable towards Germany. So we're going to try to go down this line right away to try to secure Italy. I don't think it's going to work, but uh, we can try. And then sending German advisors uh, improves uh, opinions of Italy and Austria Hungary. And then probably go down this befriending the Ottoman line uh, Baghdad, Berlin Railway. Increasing manpower. This is interesting. Supporting the Finnish Civil War. I think I really want to try to do this, actually. Uh, breaking up Russia as much as possible in order to weaken it. The Zimmerman Telegram. Ugh, this is something I want to avoid because I don't want the Americans to get involved. Uh, I'm going to try not to involve a war. I'm, trying, I'm going to try to stay out of war for most of this time, or at least a major war. But following the Zimmerman telegram, this is a cool thing, inviting Sweden to the, the Central Powers. I think I think that would be really cool if we can get Sweden into the Central Powers and expand our alliance system that way. Sort of gain hegemony over the uh, Scan Scandinavian countries, I think would be pretty cool. So that's an approach. Um, that's, that's where I'm going to take. I'm, I'm going to avoid this Bavarian nationalism. This just seems ridiculous, creating a new kingdom, Bavaria. We get extra manpower and stability, but we start off with pretty good stability. Where's stability? 92%. Germany's very stable here, so I don't think I need to do that. Uh, asserting Germany's position in the west and in the east, these are two we'll probably end up going through. We have to uh, if we want to get down into some more fun stuff down here. The Schlieffen plan. Again, I'm not going to execute it, but I think I'll go for the national focus because it does help increase world ten by 15 percentage points down there, if you see that, and that would help elevate us to a position where we can act. Uh, one of the things about this mod is uh, authoritarians have a very difficult time intervening in other nations' affairs. You need a world tension rate of at least 35, and 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 that's one of the criticisms I have about this uh, mod, because a lot of the events that happen, like the annexations of Korea and other events, uh, they don't really have a big effect on world tension, which I think, you know, they should. Uh, so, I'm going to go ahead and go for the national, for the Schlieffen plan focus, but I'm not going to actually execute the Schlieffen plan. At least that's my, that's my plan. Zeppelin campaign, that looks like fun. Um, force Denmark to take a position, and this might end up either having them access to the German Empire, give military access to the German Empire, or we end up at war. So, maybe... Requires Schlieffen plan and is at war. Ah, that stinks. Have to be at war with the United Kingdom for this to go through? Oh, these are two things that don't really go. Well, I might just invade Netherlands regardless. So in order to get this prepared for war, we need the Agdiar crisis, which uh, Morocco needs to exist. Yikes. France might take out Morocco. I saw them do that in another episode. A different episode. The Boer Revolt. We could go that way. We could do a Boer Revolt in uh which would have an effect in Uh We need some other requirements there. Alright. Uh South Africa needs to exist. Let's see what happens with that. Anti British Probably go down this line first. Anti-Russian policy, Russia, Ru Russophobia, 
anti-Serbian policy befriend Bulgaria that can invite them into the central powers. That can definitely give us an ally. Although the Bulgarian crisis that does occur in the late 1800s, uh, Bismarck does give a speech saying that Bulgaria really isn't worth intervening because in the grand scheme of things, uh, it's more important to maintain alliances. We start with a very powerful navy, probably one of the largest navies in the game. I would think 90 ships here. 90 ships. Yeah, oh man, look at all those battleships. I'm just going to merge them all together in one fleet. We've got... I'm going to merge these into a fleet. And I am going to merge these into a fleet. And I think we have submarines down here, which are already into one fleet. And again, Bismarck's approach to the Navy is not... Uh, there we go, we got 38 battleships there. Bismarck's not uh, too big on the Navy. I think he's, he would argue for more of a focus on the army. Um, we've got a pretty large population, and there's a lot of potential, especially within the focus tree, to get more population uh, going down the political line. Where is that? There it is. Kaiser Authority. Militarism gives us 5% increase. Uh, recruitable population. Military youth gives us another 2%, and then paramilitary, that allows divisions to be produced very quickly. So that's like 7 percentage points extra, which we are now at 3.7 eligible core population available. Uh, yeah. So we're going to go down that line. Bismarck was also towards the end, opposed to, we put up high tariffs and for tariffs. Right now we have limited export, which puts resources to market at 25%. Factories could trade it, change it to close the economy. We have to be at war for that to happen. Uh, and the impact, it does not say. I guess it would just be no resources to market. We'll have full access to our resources. I'm not sure if I even want to do that. We might just keep limited exports where they are. Limited conscription, this we can expand, but we already have pretty good numbers for, yeah, maybe I won't expand it. Actually, I kind of like limited conscription where it is, because I don't want to reduce factory output. Factory output is going to be our biggest issue, especially since we're not expanding. We'll need to be producing as much as we can in our factories. Uh, let's see here, research. Let's take a, take a look at the research tree here. Weapons and equipment is basically fully developed until 1914. A lot of, a lot of these uh, technologies focus around 1914. Uh, Marines we could research, but again, we're not looking for a naval campaign or any amphibious operations. Support infantry, support companies are also good until 1914, except for the signals company, which we'll need another, te we need radio technology for. I think I'm going to focus on an armor uh, approach. I'd like to get some fast-moving equipment here. There's some armored vehicles. These are really cool, based on like more World War One style. Look at a heavy tank right there. Uh, that's a huge tank. The wagon. So this looks like a route we'll explore. Getting some armor. Armor complements to the army. Artillery also seems to be important in the game. There's a new heavy artillery line here which gives heavy hard attack uh, hard attack bonus and then heavy infantry max speed plus five percent support attack I think this is going to be important to add some artillery divisions to our armies we can right away go for looks like we're stuck with the cult of offensive doctrine and it's 20 percent so I'm gonna go ahead and we got planning speed of 12%, division speed of 5%, organization loss of moving ick. Well, we're going to go ahead and start research with that. Uh, naval technologies, I'm not going to worry about this right away. Again, Bismarck not interested in the Navy as much, and it looks like all these ships are good until 1914, so we're not going to worry about that. We're not going to worry about fleet and being. See, that seems to be what the strategy w was for Germany. And I figured that would be Bismarck's strategy as well, but it looks like we're stuck with high seas fleet. 
So I'd rather do this line as far as accuracies, uh, ideological accuracy, but uh, it looks like we're stuck with that. I don't think, yeah, we're stuck with high, sea, high seas fleet. Uh, let's see, air power, not till 1915. Air doctrine, not going to be the primary focus. We're going to focus more on the army first, but this may help complement the army. Uh, looks like the two tr two technology trees we need to focus on. Ooh, yeah, we want to get these bonuses. Uh, this looks really good. And production is going to be important, and industry is going to be really important in this game. So we want to make sure we maximize our industry. Uh, recon, company, reconnaissance? No, that's not industry. Infantry recovery rate. Construction speed? Yeah, we, I think we could do that. And there's some interesting fortifications in this game. They have trenches that add to the fortification. We're probably going to go and get land forts and everything else. Uh, let's see. I think construction speed is going to be necessary to start. And what about engineering? Technology, enforcement rate, research time. Research time is always important. I try to go for that right away. Those are my... Uh, that's my technology strategy done there. Diplomacy, I'll get back to that. Trade, construction. Construction is what we want to look at next. Um, yeah. So, here's my thing with the construction. A lot of the availability for construction is along the borders, and I'm worried about losing that territory right, right away. So I'm going to start by focusing my construction in the center. Let me look at uh, my production first, because that's important. We do want... There's all these obsolete ships that are being made. I'm just going to let those ships run. Um, I'm not really going to do anything with naval production at all, except for add some convoys. I do want convoys because they are useful. We only have 195, and if we are going to end up trading, we do need to have some convoys. I'm just going to go ahead and put this convoy at the top of the naval production. Oh my god, how many ships are there? Uh, can I just move it up one? Nope, that didn't work. That's 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 what I want to do. And yeah. Let's just I don't know how to I guess it'll once the first one's constructed it'll go right to that. So that's fine. We'll just let that play out. Uh, we need military construction for sure. We need military factories for sure here. We're really short on military factories. We've only got four of the 23 possible that we could have. How is our industry? We have 58 factories, 12 in use from consumer goods. Uh, 58, 12, that gives us 46. So we can fully produce three things. Uh, I think I want one civilian factory, and then we should probably get some military factories as well. And I'm going to focus in the center, So and then build outwards, I guess. So we have less loss if we are invaded. Um, and I still have one more. So let's get another civilian factory and drop it right there. So yeah, the big focus will be factories. I could just go ahead and produce, start producing these now. This is where my industrial focus is going to be. I can put one right there. Let's get some civilian factories as well. Uh, I think this area is safe on the border of Austria. But I don't really want to put too much on the border of the Russians to start, but there's a lot of available industry there. So maybe by putting some puppet states along our borders, uh, making the Dutch a puppet state, they're not going to invade Belgium unless we end up at war with them. Let's move these factories up a little bit. We'll split this up. All right, that's my industrial strategy for now. Construction strategy. And then production-wise, 
Uh, we definitely want more for the infantry and more equipment. Oh, I have that. Oh, I didn't. Oh, uh, that changes things. I misunderstood that. Okay, that's better. Oh, maybe I don't need to focus as much on military factories then. Well, I think I do actually. I I'm fine with that. So, that's my construction, production strategy, construction strategy, recruit, and deployment. We're going to try, I'm going to try to modify some of these divisions right away. Um, this is the strongest division. And I have 15 experience points. Uh, I don't know if I can make too many changes. See, so there's artillery uh, battalions in this game, which is different from the other games where you just had infantry division battalions. Remove that. All right, I'm not going to adjust that right away, but we will start training these divisions. Uh, I'm going to want two in the west. Or east, sorry. We'll start training two in the east. I don't think I have enough equipment for this. And you know what? I'm gonna, you know, what? I'll wait till I have enough equipment. Actually, scratch that. Scratch the whole thing. We're gonna build up some equipment first. Yeah, let some stockpiles build up. And in the meantime, I need to begin putting together some armies and divisions here. Let's see. I do have... What I would like to do, I'm gonna focus on defense here. Take these ten divisions and we are going to put a... we're gonna put them into an army. Create an army. There we go. Uh, officers. Bismarck said that uh, 20 years after he left, uh, the officer corps will be depleted. So, uh, Fortress Buster, attack. We're not going to focus on attack. Is there any defense? Max entrenchment. I don't know if I need... Yeah. Trickster. Click to assign a new trait to this unit leader. Oh, wow. So I can just give him a trait. That's interesting. That'll be something to consider. Out of supply? That guy sounds really good, actually. Old guard. All right, we're going to put the old guard on the eastern front. Western front, sorry. And we're going to put a line here. Offensive line. Right there. And... That's going to be it for now in the German theater. Let's change the theater near to Western Front. Western Front. And we're going to adopt more of a defensive position there. I'm not going to look for any type of offensive operations. So that's that. In the east is where I'm going to concentrate a lot of my attacks. See, this looks like we can do like almost like, like a pincer move, and I can move troops into Austria here and cut off Warsaw. I think that would be a pretty good approach here. So I'm going to put, create a couple fronts. Uh, this front, we're going to go ahead. New division here. We want some aggression, so let's get some attack guys. And I'm going to make this line. I'm going to draw it down from this river. River to river. We're going to create a line there. And then I'm going to take these guys. I'm actually going to go ahead and move them create another one. Assign division, we want an attacker, 
I'm going to go ahead and make their line. I don't want it too far. All right. Then let's take some units. From, you know what? I want to actually assign cavalry to this division. And probably cavalry to that army. Sorry, not, not division, army. And then let's take these guys. We'll give them out of supply. I do want to use that guy. Uh, I wanted reconnaissance, actually. There we go. So I want to see what's going on on this front. Take that line down to there. Those will be our first army groups to start. We'll let those position themselves, and then I'm going to see what happens after that. Uh, this has gone on for over half an hour. Um, I want to emphasize diplomacy first. So let's try to renew the Triple Alliance and secure strong opinions of Italy. I don't think it's going to work, but we're going to try it. And that leaves me with some diplomatic decisions to be made. And we've got, oh, 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 I have 150. So right away I'm going to go ahead and get the silent work workhorse, which will increase our political power per day. And I do want to improve some relations. I'm going to send some diplomats to some countries, Italy in particular, but I need that to grow. And then I think I'm even going to send diplomats to England. Possibly Spain. I don't know if I can pull Spain into the war. Spain, ideologically, is not very authoritarian. And here's the other thing about boosting party support. I just wanted to show you. The daily drift would be zero, and it would cost five political points per day to uh, drift the party. I don't know if that's the same with other countries, but that really takes that uh, dynamic out of play here. We'll have another front opened up here. Um, probably put like my tanks there, because I think I would like to maybe try to make a run on St. Petersburg. St. Petersburg's actually kind of closer, and it would be good to capture these ports here, knocking them, knocking the Russians out of the Baltic, especially if we got a finished civil war. That could really take the Russians out of the Baltic. I don't know if we take St. Petersburg at the capital move, uh, but that, and that along with a pincer move on the Poles, I think, on Poland, I think would be the opening strategy if war does break out. And I'm going to play defense along this line here. We do have a pretty good amount of trenches already established, I think. I can't get trenches. Trenches are already established along here. Does it say it here? Yeah, look at that right there. Six. Trench level is already at six. Uh, we can up that, and we can build fortifications as well. Um, but not invading Belgium makes this a much smaller corridor, corridor to protect. I'll probably have a fallback line too, maybe. Maybe two fallback lines. All right, but I've gone on for uh, long enough here, and I have to get I have to get to my Christmas shopping. So, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoy. Sorry we didn't start it yet. They're just talking here about history and strategy. Uh, but hopefully that was enjoyable. Please uh, like the video if you did. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you think about the strategy and my approach to Bismarck. Do you agree with me or not? Um, is there any other suggestions you have? Any other suggestions for series within this mod, too? Because I really like this mod, and I think I'm probably going to play a few with this mod. So uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next episode.